In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to replace the Human Touch Supernova footrest actuator. First thing we're going to do is fully recline the chair. If you have batteries installed in the battery compartment, we need to disconnect those batteries before we go any further because the next step is we're going to um, power off the chair and unplug it and at that time the battery backup system will kick in and the chair will incline. Next we're going to power off the chair and then unplug it. Next, we're going to carefully tip the chair onto its left-hand side. Next, we're going to disconnect the footrest actuator connectors. So to do that, we need to pop off the junction box cover. So reach behind there, and that cover just pops off. and then we can disconnect the red connector. And cut the zip tie that secures those connectors together. Okay, once that cable's free, we can go move on to uh, detach the actuator itself. Next we need to um, find some way to hold the calf massager up a little bit to remove the tension on the actuator. So we can just get, we're going to use a box here, just pull up on the calf massager a bit and put something in its way so that it is not putting pressure on the wheel there. Okay, the footrest actuator is this motor here. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the 6 millimeter Allen bolt that secures this end. To do that we're going to use a uh, vice grip or any other kind of suitable wrench to hold the nut on the top while we use a 6 millimeter Allen wrench to loosen the bolt from the bottom. Once that's loose, you can remove the nut and pull the bolt out through the bottom. And as you do, um, as you remove the actuator from the mounting point, make sure you capture that metal insert that you can see there. Uh, you don't need to use it during installing the new part, but you just don't want it flying around loose in the bottom of the chair. Now we're ready to detach the end of the actuator shaft. This does not have an Allen bolt, um, but just a regular bolt. So we need two vice grips or pliers or something um, to one to hold the, the bolt at the top and one to turn the nut at the bottom.
And again, um, make sure you capture the, those inserts from both sides of that shaft, just so they're not loose. Okay, the last step then is we can um, pull the actuator out of the chair um, enough to expose the, uh, we need to detach the ground wire from the actuator. use a Phillips head screwdriver to do that. Be sure you retain that screw and we can remove the actuator from the chair. Before we install the new actuator, uh, we're actually going to go detach this ground wire. We're not going to use this ground wire that comes with the spare part. Um, we're going to simply attach the ground wire coming from the chair here. In addition, you'll see that these inserts here come with this wire holding them in place on both uh, sides, both inserts. So um, when you go to install this actuator, you'll need to cut uh, those inserts before, before you can install the uh, bolts into the mounting points there. The first thing we're going to do then is attach the ground wire to the new actuator. Again, we've removed the ground wire that came attached to the spare part. Replace that screw to secure it. And then next we can place the actuator into position aligning both mounting points so that it's held in place by both mounting points. There's that one. And it's lined up in front as well. Next, we'll install that six millimeter Allen bolt from the bottom there and the nut on top to secure it. Next we're going to connect the actuator cable connector to the corresponding connector from that cable junction box. Then we can gather up those connectors inside that junction box. It doesn't really matter how they're situated in there. What matters is that the cables come out the slots in the top. Um, that are there for that purpose so that the junction box cover doesn't pinch the cables. It's helpful once you get the cables aligned to hold them from the front like this, uh, to hold them in place. Also make sure that ground wire back there isn't uh, tied up in these cables. Um, and then we can pop the cover back on from the back. And you can here it snap into place. Kind of give it a little tug, make sure it's really on there, and check and make sure none of the cables are pinched. Next we need to deal with this mess of cabling right here. 
Um, so what we're going to do is gather it up and position it up behind the junction box there so that all, all we're seeing down here is these two cables with minimal slack in them. Everything else needs to be up and out of the way. Um, and the way it was zip tied before is they were just kind of zip tied together up there but if you have a long enough zip tie it's easier to just wrap a zip tie around that whole bundle behind there and wrap it right around the junction box and the frame. kind of difficult to see what you're doing working behind the junction box so this way is much easier there we go so it should look like that and finally we're ready to install the bolt in the mounting point at the end of the shaft Install that bolt in from the top and secure it on the bottom with the nut. Okay, now we're ready to remove whatever object we braced the calf massager with. Lower that into position. And we can return the chair to the upright position. Then now all that's left is to plug it in and power it on and confirm that the footrest is now working properly. And don't forget, if you remove batteries from the battery compartment, to replace them as well. And we're done. <laughs>